I'll put some synthetic grease on that wavy washer put that in place there put that over the top run the screw in do that up nice and tight and put this in place just put something through the fork of the rewind it all appears good okay well, there's the camera body that's back together it appears to work nicely of course the shutter I haven't dealt with yet but this did work so we might pop this loosely on here and see if we can get this to function and after that I'll strip the shutter down give it a proper birthday There you go. We'll set that to a nice slow speed. Oh, that's a bit sluggish. It certainly does need to be serviced. Yeah, that's a very slow eight. Okay. So, we know the camera body functions, it winds, everything's running smoothly there. I can deal with this shutter. So we'll take the shim off the back there, put that to one side. That can sit with the retaining ring here, pop that to one side. The rear group, that'll unscrew with my fingers. Normally you'd need a friction tool or something to get that off, but that was already quite loose. You can see that the diaphragm blades there are quite oily. Um, they're probably a bit sticky, I would think. The focus mount on the front here, the focus ring, that'll be held onto the front group with three tiny screws. When you're doing these screws up, they just need to be nipped up. You don't need to go crazy doing them up. They're only very small, and what typically happens is that when someone's doing them up, they overdo it. They end up breaking the screw. And, uh, and breaking the screw then makes it just about impossible for the next person coming along to undo this and... Uh, fix things. Alright, so the front group should unscrew. The lens is a triplet. It's a Riomar. That's a trade name of Kodak. It had nothing to do with a, formula, a formulation. It was just a trade name. And the centre group here, this is, I can see that's graphite grease. This is screwed in. And a tool, you could use a tool to engage with those notches. It depends how tight they are as to how much of a fight this is going to be. I'll see what tools I can find. Well, I just got that loose with this pair of uh, pliers. I think they used to be... No, they were just pliers and I've mutilated the tips of these to make them useful for getting things like this loose. Uh, you can be a bit cautious about using any sort of tool to do that because if you slip there's always a danger you'll damage the lens, but much more likely you might damage the top, you might damage the thread and make it difficult to get the front group to screw back in. Let's have a look at this shutter. So it's fairly conventional as uh, Compo Rapids go. This doesn't have the 
dual flash sync of the Synchro Compos, but otherwise it's a similar construction. So I just remove that lock ring. I'm using a toothpick here to unscrew this retaining ring so that I don't create any extra scratches. Here's the front cover. Now those are the those little notches there which are not particularly well lubricated. You can see it's rubbed down to the brass. <coughs> Excuse me. They give it your, your detents for your shutter speeds. Let's remove these rings. We're down to the shutter itself. That was very, very quick. Okay, so here we have the speed settings cam plate. In the shutter itself, it's like a uh, shutter on a Retina 3C, except it's somewhat simplified because it only has the single flash sync. Got our self timer here and the retard gear train over here. You can remove that cam. I remove the mainspring. I want to see how tired that is. Oh, I think it's very tired. Yeah, it's pretty tired. That'll need some attention. Remove the main cam. The speed the retard gear train, that's the smaller screw, that, that, that's, that's the one you loosen to make any adjustments. But adjusting shutter speeds on shutters is something that is done on a freshly serviced shutter. It's not something you do with your tired old dirty greasy shutter that you it doesn't perform nicely and you're wanting to make it perform better. Adjusting the speeds on a camera on a shutter that needs to be serviced is a mugs game. It'll get you nowhere useful. But people are always doing it. Yeah. That's the shutter release. We'll have that out. Okay, the flash sync, or the flash contact rather, let's have that off. A retaining screw, there's a little washer on the top, there's the flash contact. This piece can stay on the mechanism plate. I think it's actually on a, an eccentric, don't muck with it. Remove this screw, this holds the B lever in place, it's also the return spring for the, set, the settings lever the self-timer setting lever. Get that off. Remove the B lever and the B lever spring. Just unhook that. Be careful that, that easily lost, not easy to make. That's all we need off the top of the shutter. Go around to the other side and remove these three screws. They hold the aperture setting lever in place. That's this piece. You can see it's a bit dirty and grimy, greasy. That shim. And this is the uh, self-timer setting lever. Right, so we're down to the shutter case. Three screws hold the mechanism plate and the shutter case together. And this view is pretty much identical to what you'd see out of a Retina 3C. So we'll just take our mechanism plate and put that to one side with its greasy shutter blades. This needs to come apart. I'll just check and see how sticky those blades are because I've got nothing else on there now holding me back. Oh yeah, that, that doesn't even want to move. So those blades are just glued in place with oil.
take these three screws out that hold the retainer plate in place. Tip that lot out. This is the moving disc that swings the blades in and out as you go to change your aperture. Here are the blades. They're very sticky with oil. And here's the retainer plate. And you can look at the colour of that. That's got a definite oily sheen to it. So these parts I will clean now with some naphtha and then reassemble things. I'll start by assembling the diaphragm. We start right here. That sits there with the rivet upwards and I'll put the blades in and the first three go in no problem at all you just one on top of another by the time you get around here you've got to pull the blades back out of the way so you've got room to place things Now the blades were all in good condition, they were just very greasy. So they just needed to be cleaned with naphtha. The, the uh, plates were pretty good too. But that diaphragm wouldn't move at all. Well not with moderate force when I took it apart. This plate only goes on in one direction, one place, and I happen to know from experience it's right there. So we've got the rivet pointing up on the main plate there, the retainer, and this rivet points up at this position. Now put the case on the top, that only goes in one position, that rivet has to come up through this hole in the case. Like that. I flip this over and take the outside piece off and pop it underneath. And I'll fit the three retaining screws for that retaining plate. I do them up lightly. There's always a possibility a blade moved while I was putting the case over the top and if that happens then you end up potentially damaging a blade if you tighten the screws right up ok so I'll just check now what I've got I can see the five pivots are all in place still there but of course I don't know about where they sit in the slot now this moves nicely now, so that's all good. Means I can tighten those three screws up. Check the action again, make sure it's smooth. That's good. Put that to one side. Here I've got the mechanism plate. This has all been cleaned. And I've got to get the blade actuating ring in position of course that sprung loaded lever is holding me back let's just see if I can get underneath that alright that'll do it And that's held in place with the lens tube and the lens tube only goes in one position one of these three uh, feet is chewed off to allow, allow it to butt up against that post there so there's three screws the longest of the three goes through the bracket don't mix them up Because that way lies madness and death.
the longer of the three screws goes through this bracket, as I said, this bracket goes on that post right there. That bracket holds the tail of the main spring right there all in place. I can tighten those three screws up and check that the mechanism that will move. Let's see, well, that bracket's holding me back. Let's hold that back with my finger. Check that that all moves freely. That's good. I'm going to lubricate this with a bit of graphite powder now. Well, you saw none of that because I hadn't pushed the button. I just got the blades in place and I just put the case over the top and I looked up at the camera to see what was going on, make sure everything was humming along and it was just black. I obviously hadn't started the recording. Well, that's tough. It's done now. But I was just getting the blades in position on the mechanism plate after I'd um, cleaned, lubricated the mechanism plate with some graphite powder. I put the blades in place and that's all looking pretty good. There's not an awful lot to these shutters because of the simple flash mechanism. So I'll get the flash contact in position here. That has a little washer on the top and then there's a retainer screw The uh, B lever, we need the B lever spring Put that over that post There's a groove around that post that that spring sits into. I want that spring to sit around further than that so I can get it hooked into place properly but it's reluctant. Let's try that. That's better. Swing that round. Hold back this bracket. Push the blade actuating round, ring round to the blade's open position. That flash contact is certainly bent out too far. That would stop that shutter from completing the action there. Put the B lever in position. I've got to hook this return spring for that B lever into that tiny notch in the back of the B lever. No, it's not going not to go there for me. Make sure that spring's sitting correctly before I put this screw in place. That's better. And the screw that holds this in place has another spring on it. And that makes it awkward to get the spring in place because the screw in place because the spring is pushing you away from where you want to be. But it went. If I hold up the B lever I can pull the blade actuating ring back to the closed position. And get this spring rotated round against the inside of the case. Just checking the positions of things there. That looks right. Now my setting lever. Setting lever for the self timer. 
comes in here, the pin must go behind that spring so that the spring will act on that pin. The shim is here, it only goes on here in one position. It's got a tab on it that falls into a notch. Like that. The aperture setting lever here also only goes on in one position. There's a notch in here, that slot that connects up to the aperture setting lever in the shutter. And this is held in place with three retaining screws. And I have to check that this moves freely, otherwise the aperture won't move freely. That's very good so far. We'll get the third screw in place and see what happens. If things are warped, that uh, lever is warped, then often it's very stiff to move. That's good. That's good action. I'll check that those three screws are tight. That's it for under there. So what else have we got? Well, we've got our shutter release lever. I'll just clean that, pop that into place. That pops in here. Its return spring, let's get this in the right place. Its return spring is to come down inside the case. So I was pushing that aside with the tip of a screwdriver and drop that lever down into place. And this lifts the B lever. So when the shutter is, is depressed, the B lever is allowed to drop down. The main cam, the main spring, and uh, yeah, they need to go in next. Taking some molybdenum paste, I'm just going to touch the two little pins on this blade actuating ring. That's where the main cam is going to bite into that. And the main cam I have here. I've lubricated that with some molybdenum paste uh, in the center and on this curved surface in particular. The spring, that's looking a lot happier. Get that hooked into position. Was that popped up out of place? Checking that's sitting correctly at the bottom, it is, it's in the hole. You lift this tab up and bring it over the top of this bracket. But it's not playing the game. It's not tucking in there properly, was it? I'm just going to find out what's going on here. That's not tucking into that bracket correctly. Is that being folded up slightly? Possibly. Let me have a go at that again. That spring should just hook into that bracket, but it doesn't want to hook.
That's better, it just needed a little push. It was um, not behaving itself. Alright, that shutter's cocked. That flash contact's unusually stiff, something's not right here. It's this. Okay. Soft timer wasn't in position so it wasn't being this bracket wasn't being held back properly. But otherwise that worked perfectly. That cocks. That fires. Okay, I need my self my self timer and my uh, retard gear train. 